360 hasn't been around for very long. In its few short years of existence, there have been two cameras that have risen to the top head and shoulders above the others, and those are the Ricoh Theta S and the Samsung Gear 360. And one of the most common questions I get is, Ben, which of these cameras is the best? Which one should I buy? So in this video, I'm going to go over the strengths and weaknesses of each camera and help you hopefully reach a decision about which camera is best for you. So I started my career using the Ricoh Theta S and that's the camera I became well known for on Instagram, posting my Theta S photos, turning them into tiny planets and I was kind of known as the Theta S guy. I'm not really anymore and that sounds incredibly pretentious so please don't call me that but I'll always have a special affinity to this camera because it was my first camera. However, that doesn't mean that it's the best. Once upon a time it was, but now there are so many competitors and the Gear 360 is its closest competitor. Firstly, I wanna talk about the design of each of the cameras. They're two amazingly designed cameras. However, they do have their strengths and weaknesses. With the Theta S, we have one of the thinnest 360 cameras ever invented. I really love the size of this and how thin it is. It makes it very easy to hold in your hand, as well as the fact that this means the lenses are very close together and you can get a better 360 image without things getting cut off in the seam line. The Gear 360 lenses are far apart and this produces some problems with stitching because it, they're about five centimeters apart and that produces a significant gap in between the two spherical images when it gets stitched together. So if I were to take a video right now, I would get the stitch completely out. If I put it there, half my face would be missing. Whereas with the Theta, it's only, you're only going to miss a very small amount of space. Something I love about the Gear 360 is its inbuilt tripod. This is really cool and this means you get more stability on your camera. If you're putting it on the ground, it, it's much less likely to blow over. Whereas with the Theta, honestly, I've totaled four of these because they blew over in wind or I did something else stupid with them. But because it's tall, it's very likely to lose its balance easily. You've got to really monitor it and I found I have to, I've had to put it on a little Manfrotto mini pixie tabletop tripod. Every time I set this camera up, I'm shit scared that it's going to break and that I'm going to be broke again for, for having to get a new one. Whereas with the Gear 360, I just don't worry about that. I've never worried about it ever, I don't think, because of the, the legs. And another cool thing is you can actually remove the legs. Um, that's a very handy feature. And this means you can put a selfie stick in between or you can just put this on a tripod or on the ground without it. Um, I guess hypothetically you could attach the legs to the Theta, but then that means you'd have to have both cameras to begin with. Overall, in terms of the design, I think they're about even. They have the same amount of strengths, same amount of weaknesses, so you should not make your decision based purely on the design of the camera. Memory. The Theta S has an inbuilt eight gigabyte micro SD card. That's not a lot of storage, is it? Whereas with the Gear 360, you can put any amount of memory you want into it, up to 128 gigabytes. That's a lot, and you can shoot forever with that amount of storage. Honestly, it hasn't been a huge issue for me. I just don't shoot that much when I go out. When I go out, I will shoot no more than one to two gigabytes. Even if I'm shooting photo and video, I'll upload them to my smartphone or my computer, and then I'll just format the memory card. So honestly, even though eight gigabytes is annoying, it hasn't been an issue for me. It just hasn't. I haven't filled it up, and when, when I have, I've just emptied it. It's been no big deal. I'm backing my footage up and my photos up anyway. If they're important photos and videos, you should back them up to your computer. Yes, I love having a 128 gigabyte card in this. And if you were shooting a lot of 4K 360 video, I could see how you could get like up to 32 or 64 gigabytes. Honestly, in my personal opinion, 360 video is not a medium that should go longer than about 10 minutes or so. It gets too tiring having to scroll around your 360 for that long or move your head in a VR headset. It becomes too nauseating, uncomfortable, and you get bored of it. So honestly, I wouldn't go out shooting for a really long time, regardless of which camera you have. Next we have battery. The Theta S has an inbuilt battery. The Gear 360 you can change them. Again this hasn't really been an issue for me because I can just charge my Theta S with a portable power bank. Yes you can replace the Gear 360s and that's definitely handy but it's essentially the same process. You're just recharging the battery. So battery is just not a huge deciding factor for me. Maybe it is for people who want to shoot for longer but for me this is a non-issue. Resolution. Here is the photo resolution. And here's the video resolution. 
As you can see, the Gear 360 kicks the Theta's ass for both of them. Don't get me wrong, they're both great 360 photo cameras, but for video, there's just no comparison. The Gear 360 produces much nicer, clearer video than the Theta S. The Theta S's video is still usable and too many people say, oh no, it's, it's unusable, don't even think about shooting video. But the, as you'll see in one of my previous comparisons, it produces one of the best dynamic ranges of all the cameras, the Theta S. Even though it's 1920 by 960 video, the dynamic range looks damn good. Your colors look really nice and the exposure looks really nice. Whereas some other cameras, your highlights are overblown, your shadows are too dark and there's just not enough color. So the Theta S is absolutely usable for video. However, once you see the Gear 360's 4K 360 video, you just won't ever be able to go back to a camera like this because the resolution is just so nice to look at. It's so sharp, looks fantastic. And anything less just won't be enough. I hate to say it, but this looks fantastic and I don't want anything less than fantastic for my videos. So for resolution, Gear 360 is the winner. One big area that these cameras differ is exposure. With the Theta S, you have full manual control over your exposure, whereas with the Gear 360, you don't. You have basic control, but in low light, you will see a huge difference between these two. The Gear 360, you can barely see anything, whereas with the Theta S, for photos, you can practically see in the dark. You can do up to a 30 second exposure. And look, this only applies to photo and not for video. Both of these cameras are not good in low light for video and no 360 camera is. Technology hasn't gotten there yet to the point that we can make a 360 camera like a Sony a7S that can see in the dark. Definitely one day, and that's gonna be one day soon because the technology is evolving so damn fast, but not yet. So if you're shooting at night time and you want video, um, Honestly, like no camera's gonna do it, so I'd forget both of these cameras and just shoot your video with a conventional camera. Okay, so here I've taken the exact same photo in the same setup with both cameras in auto exposure mode, and they both do a pretty darn good job. The first thing to point out is that they both have a pretty good dynamic range. You can see the sky pretty clearly, you can see the shadows pretty clearly. Yes, they do have big differences as well, but these are the two of the best cameras for dynamic range. The biggest difference between the two for me is how they handle the sun. Something I've always admired about the Theta is that it handles the sun so well. It's not really affecting the image at all, it's just a small spot there, not really creating much of a beam or a light. It's just there and it doesn't command the attention of the viewer. Whereas with the Gear 360, the sun is much brighter. It's a big sunspot and it's also creating rays across the whole image that really affect the color tones of the sky all throughout from left to right. Whereas with the Theta S, the sky is more or less that same shade of blue. When you edit these as tiny planets, look, you could say it's an advantage having different shades of blue in the sky because it's more interesting to look at. However, you don't always want that in your shot. And whenever you're out in sunlight, this will be an issue with the Gear 360, whereas it won't be with the Theta. The Theta is the camera that handles the sun the best out of any 360 camera. Next, I'll point out the lens flares. You can see the Gear 360 is creating those lines around the sun. That's a pretty big flare, as well as the red spheres around the direct center of the sun. With the Theta S, there's no lens flare. Or is there? A common problem that people encounter with the Theta is it puts a random red dot in their images and videos and nobody understands why. Here's the reason why, it's a lens flare. This is how the Theta's lenses react to the sun. It can be very annoying when it ends up in front of your face and you just can't edit it out. However, when you look at the size of it compared to the Gear 360, it's much less intrusive. Next, I'll say the colors are much more saturated on the Theta image. The Gear 360's colors are a bit more flat and washed out. When I edit this 360 into a tiny planet, here's what it looks like. You'll notice that the shadows of each camera are different shapes. The Theta's is longer and narrower. The Gear 360's is round. And here I've removed the shadow and done a color grade to each image, which leaves them more or less looking the same. In my opinion, the Theta image looks better, but they both turned out really well and I'd be happy to use either one on Instagram. So everything from the photo side of things also transfers to the video side. 
all of the strengths and weaknesses from before apply to video. It's only when you watch the footage full screen that you can see there's a massive difference in resolution. It can be viewed many different ways as an equirectangular video like you're seeing it now, as an interactive 360 and as a tiny planet. But in every single one, you'll notice that the Gear 360 is much sharper and much higher res than the Theta. For tiny planets, this isn't an issue for me, but for every other kind of 360 video, it absolutely is. Something else worth adding is that this footage was shot with extreme sunlight. Whenever the lighting is less intense, like on a cloudy day or even just an average day, or if you're shooting inside, the exposure for video will more or less look identical between these two cameras. It's only in sun that you see that big difference. Here they are when shooting handheld video. Now I would definitely advise against walking around with your video camera in your hand, but if you feel the need to, then stabilization is going to be a factor for you. You can see the Theta S has much better stabilization than the Gear 360. However, I've learned the hard way that it's just best to keep your camera on a tripod or a monopod when shooting video. In terms of compatibility, the Theta S is compatible with both iPhone and Android, whereas the Gear 360 is only Android. And not just Android, but Samsung Galaxy, like a few models of Samsung Galaxy. So that is a severe limitation. The next Gear 360 is going to be compatible across Android and iPhone, so you'll have to wait for that. Otherwise, this one is only for Galaxy users. But look, like I said in my previous Gear 360 review, I actually went out and bought a Samsung Galaxy just so I could use this camera, and I consider it a damn good investment because this camera is just so worth it that I would pay $800 for it. Finally, we have price, and something with 360 cameras is their price fluctuates so much. Because there's so many new cameras coming out and so many competitors, all the major 360 camera brands are lowering their price so they can get to the top of the market. So at the moment, the Gear 360, I saw it on Amazon for like $190, $200. That is incredible. At the moment, the Theta S is about $300 on Amazon. Look, both of those prices could change. That's what they are at the moment. And they're good prices. To me, it's just a no-brainer that the Gear 360 at $200 is going to be the best investment because it has the best specs and it's the cheapest. So in conclusion, what I usually tell people is this. If you're a photographer and having manual control over your photos is the most important thing to you, then the Theta S is the camera for you. It's the better photo camera just simply because of this. Yes, the resolution's less, but you can get better overall results from your photos in a wider range of situations. If 360 video is the most important thing to you, then it's just a no-brainer that the Gear 360 is going to be the best 360 camera for you. That 4K 360 video is incredible, you can't say no to it. Yes, it's going to be difficult if you have an iPhone. You might have to get a Galaxy S7 or just wait for the next Gear 360 to come out. It shouldn't be too long. And you know what? Because the price is so low, don't discount the idea of having two cameras. If you want complete versatility, you wanna be able to shoot at night, shoot manually, and have really good stitching, as well as being able to shoot amazing 360 4K video, then consider both. That's probably $500 total, which isn't that much. I think the Nikon Key Mission is going for $500. So what would you prefer, a Nikon Key Mission, which has nothing but one-star reviews on Amazon, or two of the two very best cameras money can buy at the moment? your choice. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the box below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Look, to be honest, having any 360 camera is better than having no 360 camera. So if all you can afford is a $99 360 camera or a $199 360 camera, get one because this is an amazing technology and being there from the beginning is going to put you so much further ahead later on when it really does become mainstream and we're shooting like 20K video on our phones in 360. And if you were there from the beginning and you really understand the fundamentals of 360, you're going to be so much better placed than everyone else creating 360 content that hadn't embraced it before. So once you pick up one of these cameras, you might wanna check out my ebook. It's called Life in 360, A Beginner's Guide to Tiny Planet Photography. And it'll really help you unleash the power of these two bad boys using a style called Tiny Planet Photography. Everyone's going nuts over it on Instagram. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So I thought I'd write a book about it. I'll put links in the description to where you can find Find these two cameras for the cheapest amount possible on Amazon. They're crazy, crazy cheap. So if you can't afford it, find a way to just sell your dog or your kid or just like work a street corner if you have to. That's what I did and I'm all the better for it. No, I'm just kidding. Or am I? Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. And until next time, keep living your life in 360. Theta S. Gear 360. Which is the better camera? Well, I just can't play favorites.
bye.